Municipal Authority special call meeting for today. Roll call, please. Mayor Bob Coburn. Here. Deputy Mayor James Scully. Here. Dan Hall. Present. Marlon Coleman. Here. Janie Boydston. Here. Dwayne Johnson. Here. Patrick Kale. Ivory Band. Here. Derek Reed. Here. Uh, item number one. Consider approval of the acceptance of ODEQ consent order number 16-203 and if approved, authorize the execution at the same time or take any other necessary action. Mr. Stewart. <coughs> We're getting there. Okay. All right. <laughs> Me too. Wasn't sure which meeting you were calling first. Momentary delay. Okay. We had a uh, sanitary sewer bypass, which I'm sure you guys are all aware of, that uh, resulted in a $10,000 uh, penalty from ODEQ. Uh, we have until November 1st to respond to that. I have been in communication with ODEQ, uh, and I'm trying to uh, make an agreement or work an arrangement out with them where we can uh, do $10,000 worth of sanitary sewer improvements in lieu of the uh, $10,000 fee. I have not gotten a, an, an answer from them as of yet. Uh, I've been in conversations with them uh, today. Uh, they did say it with uh, $10,000 is the uh, fine that they usually assess for any type of a fish kill. Uh, and they were and the gentleman that we usually deal with is on <coughs> vacation till tomorrow. So I really expect an answer from that uh, by tomorrow. But either way, we will be assessed a $10,000 uh, penalty, whether it's uh, a cash check that we have to write them a cashier's check or whether it's uh, in lieu of some type of sanitary sewer improvements. Uh, this occurred um, in May of this year. Uh, Billy Aguirre is here to assist me if I need it, but I think I can explain it to you. We have a lift station, uh, which is up on the screen right now, which is lift station number eight, which is over on uh, Beacon Street, which failed. And when that failed, that caused the 27 inch main that runs to that lift station to back up. <coughs> and uh, from lift station number eight back to where it, that red line ends, which is over on main, just about Douglas, very near the, uh, the trail system over there, that's about a half a mile. So when that lift station failed, that 27 inch line backed up. That uh, caused it to bypass from that manhole over there um, we were unaware that it was bypassing over there, as Billy Gary noted to me, when lift station number eight bypasses, it usually comes out over by Kmart. Uh, unfortunately, a resident over there did uh, spot that and, and not call us. He called ODEQ, and ODEQ responded, um, and we met with them over there. Billy did. What he discovered, if you can see where that uh, uh, line where it says point of bypass, there are three lines that actually come in there. Uh, it is a 12-inch line that runs straight off of that manhole uh, that actually had the bottom uh, gone out of it. So when that back pressured, it fed that, uh, that sewage out of the bottom of that. Billy was able to determine where that was the next day, and, and uh, he actually made the repairs right after that. So the line has been repaired. The problem has been corrected. But unfortunately, when it did bypass, it fed into the drainage channel over there, which is in green. So it fed into that, which did result in a fish kill, uh, killing approximately 900 uh, uh, various species of fish. Uh, after Billy did uh, get it repaired, we did notice aquatic life back in the channel almost immediately. Um, again, this has been repaired. We did respond to it as soon as we knew about it. Um, and I'll answer any questions. And Billy here is here to assist me needed. Mr. Stewart, when you say 10,000 in repairs in lieu of paying the fine, uh, what will we be repairing if the repairs have already been made? I would offer, uh, when I get that conversations with them, I will offer to try and put that money into lift station number eight or somewhere along this system that failed is where I would have in mind. I think they would be more acceptable to that. Okay. And I'll know that after I have communications with them, but we have opened that dialogue. Sure be better for us to have that than send them a check for that we get no no benefit from. They have worked that out with us in the past, and I am high hopes that we can do that again. Yeah. Move for approval as presented. Second. No motion in a second. Any additional comment or discussion? Roll call. Deputy Mayor James Scully. Yes. Janie Boydston. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Uh, yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Mayor Coburn. Yes. Motion carries, and that concludes <coughs> our uh, agenda from the Muskogee Municipal Authority.
Call to order the Finance Committee meeting for August the 16th, 2016. Our first item will be a recognition from the mayor. If you would join me down front, we have a certificate for presentation. We would like to uh, present to Pete Lamata today uh, for his uh, retirement and for his years of service with the City of Muskogee, September 27th of 95 through July 30th of 2016. Life is not measured so much by the quantity of days, but by the quality of days. And we just want to present this to you and say thank you for the service you have performed for the City of Muskogee and the citizens of Muskogee. Well, thank you. And we're very appreciative of that. We'd like to shake your hand. So let me this to you and we'll do a photo if we want to do that <laughs> oh I'm sorry Chief Esker. Pete on behalf of the Muskogee Police Department uh, I want to take this opportunity to thank you for all that you've done for the Muskogee Police Department, but also for the community and the citizens of this town. It's very special to recognize someone like you. Uh, you are an inherently decent human being, and it showed every day the way you did your job. So Pete, here's your retirement badge. We didn't want you to retire, but we're so happy for you personally, and we wish you the very best. So congratulations, Pete. Thank you very much. Thanks for the opportunity, Chief. Okay. I appreciate it. Yeah. Do I need to say some words? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to thank the city for giving me the opportunity as a young 27-year-old just out of the military, giving me a chance to serve once again. I've enjoyed our, uh, one of the few jobs I've enjoyed was going to work every day. I never hated to come to work. I always love to do something different every day, and I just enjoy the opportunity for serving the city and give me the chance to do it. Thank you. Congratulations, Pete. <laughs> Good luck. Item number one, please. Consider approval of finance committee minutes of August 2nd, 2016. <coughs> Reviewing of the minutes, are there any corrections? Move, Move for approval. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Deputy Mayor James Scully? Yes. Janie Boydston? Yes. Marlon Coleman? Yes. Wayne Johnson? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Derek Reed? Yes. Dan Hall? Yes. Mayor Comer? <coughs> yes. Item number one passed. Item number two, please. Consider approval of claims for all city departments 728 2016 to 810 2016. Do we have a report from the purchasing committee? Yes, sir. The purchasing committee met earlier today and reviewed the report of claims, and I move for approval. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the claims. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Deputy Mayor James Scully? Yes. Janie Boydston? Yes. Marlon Coleman? Yes. Wayne Johnson? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. <coughs> Derek Reed? Yes. Dan Hall? Yes. Mayor Coburn? Yes. Item two passed. Item number three, please. 
Consider approval of final payment to Flint Co. LLC in the amount of $206,431.07 for the construction of the Martin Luther King Center or take other necessary action. Mr. Garvin. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, the construction of the Martin Luther King Center is completed. Uh, the punch list was addressed. A certificate <coughs> of occupancy was issued. The general contractor, Flint Co., is requesting approval of final payment. Uh, the project was completed under budget. The original contract price was $4,180,232. Total cost of construction was $4,128,621.46, leaving a balance of $51,610.54. Uh, the general contractor does provide a one-year warranty on the structure, along with warranties on the equipment. The architect, Scott Ambler, and city staff have both reviewed and recommended approval of the final payment. Be glad to answer any questions. Mr. Chair, uh, as well as Mr. Garvin, certainly I want to say on behalf of the residents, many of whom are now taking advantage of that facility, uh, that that was one of the uh, landmark projects I think the city of Muskogee can be very, very proud of. Uh, not only was it done under budget, but it was done in a very professional manner. I happened to be there the day that they did the walkthrough uh, to certify that everything had been done correctly. And without uh, neighbors building neighborhoods even having to identify several of the flaws, they did it on their own. Uh, and we're very ready to do uh, what needed to be done to make those repairs so that the building can open on time. And I also want to take this opportunity to encourage all of our residents uh, to be reminded of the fact that when that center was constructed, uh, we purposely said Martin Luther King Jr. Community <coughs> Center so that we can remind all of our residents that that facility is for every resident. Uh, because Dr. King's vision was that we would have mechanisms to bring people together across color barriers. And so certainly we want to encourage our residents and certainly give our thanks to all of those who had their part in making certain that we have this facility in Muskogee. Move for approval. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve this item. Any further discussion? Roll call. Deputy Mayor James Scully. Yes. Janie Boydston. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Mayor Coburn. Yes. Item three passed. Item number four. Consider approval of an amendment to agreement dated July 30th, 2012, between the City of Muskogee and Pictometry International Corporation to provide detailed aerial photography of the City of Muskogee and authorize the City Manager to execute said amendment or take other necessary action. Mr. Garvin. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, back in July 2012, the City of Muskogee entered into a contract with Pictometry International to provide detailed aerial photography, pictometry, of the City of Muskogee. The agreement stated Pictometry International would provide the photos of the city limits uh, in January of 2013 at a cost of $28,104.50, and it was to be payable over a three-year period. They were going to have a second capture, a second flight, three years later. Uh, the cost for the second flight was $32,526.50. So the total cost of the agreement was $60,631. Uh, the first flight consisted of 67 images for the city limits. The second flight is going to need a total of 72 images to cover the city limits. So there's five additional images. Those five additional images uh, were a cost, uh, will have additional cost of $2,412. Because of that uh, amendment or the additional images, they're having to amend the contract. So what we're asking for is approval of the amendment to do those five extra images <laughs> at a cost of $2,412 and authorize the city manager to execute the amendment. Be glad to answer any questions. Does this program seem to be working out okay for our city? Yes, we talked about it in the purchasing committee uh, just prior to this, and, and we talked about how the PD uses it, the fire department uses it, uh, inspections department uses it a lot, especially when the demolition. We was using it to measure buildings, square footages for pricing. Uh, the public works uses it for uh, determining cost or how much area for material. So it, it's used by a lot of different departments. Move for approval. Second. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Deputy Mayor James Scully. Yes. Janie Boydston. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Mayor Coburn. Yes. Item four passed. Item number five. Consider approval of low bid from Hogle Plumbing, plumbing contractor for maintenance and upkeep of all city facilities and buildings or take other necessary action. Mr. Garvin. 
Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, we, bids were sent out to all local licensed uh, contractors, uh, and it was also published in the paper, and this is for the annual contract for maintenance and upkeep of the plumbing system within the city uh, facilities and buildings. We are recommending Hogle Plumbing at an hourly rate of $65 per for contractor and journeyman and $38 for the apprentice. Uh, resp response time is four hours for emergency calls and one day or less for normal situations. Uh, last year's contract was with Hogle. Uh, we are recommending Hogle again, and it's also been recommended for approval by the Purchasing Committee. Be glad to answer any questions. Uh, one quick question. Didn't we, I know we hired someone to be our facilities manager and then he's no longer here, but didn't we move someone up into that position to oversee some of that stuff? Yes, and that's for the maintenance, but there's some items that you have to have license for in order to perform the work, and this will be the jobs that we cannot do in-house, that we have to go outside for the licenses. Billy Coffer is that guy's name. Yeah. Directly behind me. So are we not ever going to get to a point where we're all in-house on our stuff? Well, we would have to have a, a contractor, a, a licensed contractor for electrical, mechanical, and plumbing and then they'd have to have licensed journeymen working underneath them to do some of the work. Most of the maintenance we can do, but there's some items where we have to have a license. You're expressing some of the same concerns that uh, Mr. Garvin and I discussed the other day. Mm -hmm. um, well, I mean, if we're not ever gonna get there, then why do we have those that position? Well, they have uh, plenty of work to be done other than just the plumbing and electrical stuff. Um, and so repairing things is a substantial amount of what they do. Um, but uh, one of the things that uh, Mr. Garvin was looking into is seeing if we could contract with uh, a licensed person uh, to serve as a general contractor. So that's something that we were looking into so that we could have someone in-house who could do the work in that. But that's more of a, that's not a this year fiscal plan, but it's next year. I understand. I just... And they can change balances, they can change breakers, they can do things like that. But if they have to install a new panel, you have to have a license. You have to have a contractor's license and a journeyman working for that contractor to do the work. Okay. So that's the one where we run. I just thought that was a road that we were going down, and it looks like. And hopefully one day we'll get there, but, but it's it's going to be a long road. Look at the. So as a follow up to Councilor Hall's question, are we in the planning process or or thought process to see how cost advantageous it would be for us to have someone licensed in house that can do that as opposed to always contracting it out? Yes, I've asked the uh, the manager of that department, Billy, to put together how much money we spent on each contractor this past year. So we can kind of see what cost was involved, see how that re would relate to actually hiring a contractor or having a contractor on city staff. So we're looking into all that. So how soon can we expect to see that? Uh, 90 days, six months? Uh, we should have something within 90 days. Of okay, plan I'm just curious. Out. Thank you. Or would it take a, until the next physical year so you give us a good estimate of what that's going to be? Well, we've got uh, uh, one year of budget, but it was the first year, so it's going to be a kind of a hit and miss. Uh, it, it'd take this year's budget to come up with some good good numbers, act more accurate numbers, uh, but we, we can get a pretty good idea. Okay. Thanks, Gary. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I recognize. Yes, sir. Mr. Garvin, how many uh, contractors have applied? Say again? How many contractors applied for this position? For this bid? For this we bid. had one person submit a bid. Just one? That was Hogle? That was Hogle. And yes. Hogle Plumbing has been doing it for two years? Uh, I think he's just been doing it last year. I think before then it was Seaboat, I believe. Right. Okay. I was just curious how many we had. Yeah, but we, we send out notice to all uh, local licensed contractors okay. and we also publish it in the paper and on the mechanical which is coming up a little later I think we got four bids <coughs> on it but on the electrical and plumbing we just received the one for each okay. one of those I was just curious thank you you're welcome turn the floor back over to you Mr. Terms any further discussion can we find a motion move for approval second motion and a second roll call please Deputy Mayor James Goley. Yes. Jenny Boydston. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Aubrey Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Mayor Coleman. Yes. Item number five, pass. Item number six. Consider approval of lowest bid for the following road materials aggregate, three inch pit run, 12 inch pit run, limestone screenings, and number two cover material to Kempstone, asphalt sand alternate number one, and fill sand alternate number two to Muskogee Sand asphaltic concrete type B and C to APAC, 
hot, cold patching material to Tulsa asphalt or take other necessary action. Mrs. Stewart. Yeah, this is our annual road bid uh, that we put out every year to keep the street department in <coughs> road materials. Uh, the aggregate, which is the first, is just a regular base run, and that's what we use for uh, base courses underneath the streets, and we also use that to backfill the uh, uh, water cuts. Three-inch pit run, 12-inch pit run, we don't use as often. We really use all that type of material when we have washouts. Uh, limestone screenings we use sometimes to uh, cover spills and a little abrasive product that we'll go out and use. Very rarely do we use it. Uh, number two, cover material. That's what we do use for our chip and seal. Uh, sand, uh, of course, you know what we use that for. The uh, asphaltic concrete, that's the uh, hot mix uh, asphalt that we use on the street. And the hot mix coal patching is what we use uh, through the winter months to uh, patch potholes with. Uh, we are recommending low bid on all these uh, items. Uh, we have used all these companies before. They're, they're very familiar with us, and we are with them. Their materials are sound. So we recommend approval. Mike, do we need to clarify on that the inch and a half also? The aggregate is inch and a half base course material, okay. and uh, that's the way it's termed as aggregate, but everybody understands it's inch and a half product. Okay. Move, Move the approval. approval. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve this item. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Deputy Mayor James Scully. Yes. Jenny Boydston. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Arby Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Mayor Coburn. Yes. Item number six passed. Item number seven, please. Consider approval of low bid from Hicks Air Conditioning Mechanical Contractor for maintenance and upkeep of all city facilities and buildings or take other necessary action. Mr. Garvin. This is the annual contract for the mechanical heat and air system for the city facilities and buildings. Uh, we did receive four bids on this one. We are recommending approval of the lowest bid from Hicks Air Conditioning and Mount hourly rate of $58 for contractor and journeyman, $30 for apprentice. Response time is six hours for emergency calls and one day or less for normal situations. Uh, it's been recommended for approval by the purchasing committee. We'd be glad to answer any questions. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve this item. Any further discussion? Mr. Uh, Garvin, is this uh, synonymous with the conversation that Councilor Hall and I were asking questions about earlier that we also are going to pursue? Yes, it, it, it's in all categories. It's okay. in electrical, plumbing, and mechanical. All three of those, you're supposed to be licensed to do certain things. Thank you. Roll call. Deputy Mayor James Scully. Yes. Jenny Boydston. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Mayor Coburn. Yes. Item number seven passed. Item number eight. Consider approval of low bid from BNR Electric, electrical contractor for maintenance and upkeep of all city facilities and buildings or take other necessary action. Mr. Garvin. This is the last one. This is for the electrical system for the city of Muskogee. Uh, we are recommending approval <coughs> of BNR Electric for an hourly rate of $65 for contractor and journeyman and $30 for apprentice. His response time for emergency situations is two hours and one day or less for normal situations. And this has also been recommended for approval by the purchasing committee. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve this item. Any further discussion? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, may I be rec What do we do, two hour response on one and four hour response on the other? That's just, uh, which we asked for a response time on emergency on each one and also on normal situations. And we do consider that if there's more than one bid, we consider the response time as part of the uh, determination on whether, whether they're the best bid. Dr. Bingham. Yeah, I miss, <coughs> let me recognize. Yes, sir. Uh, how many you said bid on this? I must have missed it. On this it. one, on BNR, there was only one on the electrical. BNR was the only one who bid on it. On the mechanical, the one previously, there was right, four. four. I was just wondering, Mr. Gordon, why do you think the plumbing and the and electrical is so many, I mean, many plumbers and electricians we have around here in Muskogee, because I know Jack Walford did have it at one time. Why do you think it's people are not bidding on this? Well, we run into this issue every year, but it's not necessarily just electrical and plumbing. Some years it's mechanical. Uh, I don't know if it's just so big, they're so busy, they don't have the opportunity to, or the time to do it, uh, but we run into this every year, the same problem. You know, if you had a small crew and you had to respond in an emergency situation, I can see someone not wanting to bid from that standpoint. Yeah, and this year we we added a section on the uh, uh, response. In the in the past, last year we had 
issues with one of the contractors not responding within the time period that he stated in the contract. But the problem was he was just a two man, two, three man shop. And if he was on another job, he couldn't send the employees out. So we requested this year that they provide us a backup contractor to where if we can't get a hold of them or they can't respond within the time period of the contract, uh, the contract states, we're going to call that other contractor and have him come out and do it. But that contractor has to take care of the billing. We only deal with the one we have a contract. And they've listed backup contractors for them if for some reason they could not respond. It's probably the biggest electric contract contractor is uh, Renfro. Uh, I'm guessing, I don't know. He's one of the big ones. Uh, Rocky uh, is Rocky a pretty good size. Uh, but we, we sent it to everyone who is local contractors and licensed in the city. We sent a bid packet to them. Have you uh, ever everybody just, else we, we published in the paper so everybody else can see it. Have you ever just reached out to them and asked them why, you know? Uh, we have in the past. A lot of times it's just either they don't have the manpower to do it or they've got too many jobs going on. And, and yeah. Yeah, you take one big project and a two, three man crew, that's going to keep them tied up for several months. Okay. Turn the floor back over to you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Roll call. Deputy Mayor James Scully. Yes. Jenny Boydston. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Dan. <coughs> yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Mayor Coburn. Yes. Item number eight passed. Item number nine, please. Consider approval of awarding to the low bidder Tonto Construction Incorporated in the amount of $32,480 for residual removal and reuse at the water treatment plant or take other necessary action. Mr. Stewart. Yes, annually we uh, go out to the uh, water plant and uh, we have three lagoons out there that hold the residual material from our backwash filters. Uh, but annually we do go out there and clean one pond a year. Uh, Tonto has cleaned these out many, many times. I want to point out to you there's a big discrepancy in the prices. Uh, Reed Environmental bid 124000 on the top end. Dirtworks was at 58750 and Tonto's at 32480 uh, Tonto's price is good. It's sound. Uh, Danny Leatherman, the owner of Tonto, has cleaned these ponds out many times. He knows exactly what he's uh, getting himself into, whereas the other two have not. Uh, one of the issues was the pond depths and whether they would get stuck out there and different types of methods to clean it. Danny is very well aware of, of what it takes to clean these out. His 32,480 is well within our budget. He has done it before. We recommend approval and I'll answer any questions. This is a silty, loomy type material, by the way. Uh, we, we used to term it as sludge, now it's termed residual but really it's, it's a sandy type material that just fills in these ponds and he will remove it, haul it out to the, uh, the banks along the <coughs> riverbed, which has been approved for site disposal uh, and we recommend approval. We have discussed this uh, with the port, by the way, so they are aware of what we're doing okay. Good for approval. I don't mean to be negative. Did we have an issue a while back here? Is it fixed? I mean, they have a place to dump it and everything and all that good stuff? Everything should be worked out uh, as far as I know, Councilman Hall. Uh, I appreciate it. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve this item. Any further discussion? Yes, Mr. Reed, may I be recognized? Yes, sir. I think uh, Mr. Tonto Construction, I think they're a reliable company. They've been around Muskogee a long time, and I'm glad they got the bid on this. So I'm, uh, I'm definitely glad they got the bid. So I'll yield the floor back over to you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Roll call, please. Deputy Mayor Jim Scully. Yes. Janie Boydston. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Mayor Coburn. Yes. Item number nine passed. Item number 10, please. Consider approval of the lowest bid for concrete to Muskogee Ready Mix for 3,500 pounds of concrete. Ready Mix for 3,500 pounds of concrete high early, 3,000 pounds of concrete to mid-continent, and flow fill to Twin Cities for the fiscal year 2016-2017 or take other necessary action. Mr. Stewart. First, I want to point out that uh, where it says 3,500 pounds and it says that after each one of those, that should be PSI. That should read 3,500 pounds per square inch concrete. Uh, as you're probably well aware, that uh, term means it th takes 3,500 pounds of pressure per square inch to break it. That's how they uh, rate the concrete. So that should be PSI. Uh, we're recommending low bid uh, on all items. They're local companies, and uh, we'll answer any questions. But we've used all three concrete companies, and we do have to use all three throughout the year. Sometimes they'll have too many jobs going, and we'll go to the next bid. But we use low bid. It rotates between companies. We've used all three. They're all three reputable, make good product, and have good delivery response time. So recommend low bid. Move for approval. Second. 
Have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Deputy Mayor James Gulley? Yes. Janie Boydston? Yes. Marlon Coleman? Yes. Wayne Johnson? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Derek Reed? <coughs> yes. Dan Hall? Yes. Mayor Coburn? Yes. Item number <coughs> 10 passed, and that was our final item. We will now call the order of the Public Works Committee meeting. Item number one. Consider approval of Public Works Committee minutes of August 2nd, 2016. Additions or changes? Move the approval. Second. We have a motion and second. Any discussion? Roll call. Deputy Mayor James Scully? Yes. Janie Boydston? Yes. Marlon Coleman? Yes. Wayne Johnson? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Derek Reed? Yes. Dan Hall? Yes. Mayor Coburn? Yes. And the motion carries. Item number two. Consider approval of resolutions declaring the following parcels of property as surplus to the needs of the city and authorizing the conveyance of said property or take other necessary action. Mr. Miller. <coughs> All right, Chairman and members of the committee, <coughs> we have uh, total in these uh, agenda items are 12 properties that we're going to transfer into private hands. So um, we're excited about that. The first three uh, were the uh, only bidders on surplus property. So those three people are paying the uh, minimum amount. So the city's recouping some costs there. The next uh, three agenda items are uh, D, C, D, E, and F are uh, properties that are through the incentive program. And so uh, those three uh, will be building and improving those lots. Uh, and we're offering those uh, free of charge to them in, in return <coughs> as part of the incentive program. And uh, G, I want to um, talk about separately, <coughs> is uh, basically we're offering it, um, we're, we're trying to ask the, the council and the, the committee to to um, let the, uh, the current neighbor, uh, Ms. Jimenez, have the property. She originally uh, acquired it through the county. Uh, the county, as part of their process with the deed, did not give her the entire property, so she thought it's her yard the whole time. <laughs> and so when we went through the surplus property uh, experience, she found out, oh, this is not my property, and I want to get it. And so it was a clerical error on the part of the county. We want to correct that. Uh, and, and not have her bear the cost of that. So it's not technically an incentive property, but we're asking for, for it to be given to her at no charge. So those are the, the items before you. Uh, we're excited about the potential for development on those properties and recommend approval. Are all these properties the ones that we just received from the county, probably that 54, or some of these other ones, are 56 pieces of pr property? Some of these are, some of these are part of that, some of these are part of the, the I'm not sure which batch they're from, but they're part of that transfer from the from the county. Yes. I'm just sitting here trying to keep total of which ones we're getting rid of. <laughs> Me and Roy's got a bet on this. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> well, yeah, friendly one, of course. It's a friendly one. This would, if you want to really know, this, this, these 12 properties, when when and if they're they're approved, would bring the total to 36. My deal is that we were getting properties from the county, and we we're going to have to mow them. And then that was my deal, spending taxpayers' dollars to mow these while we were hanging on to them. So he says, we can get rid of them. So that's the deal. <laughs> Every well, time we, you bring some forward, we're seeing if we're getting rid of them. All right. And, this, and like I said, this gets us to 36. Okay. Uh, so I'm, I'm, you still have 20 more to go. Um, it was 50% of them within 90 days, if I remember. That's your rules. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, any other Move discussion? for approval. <laughs> <laughs> second. I have a motion and a second. Any other discussions or comments? Yeah, maybe recognize Mr. Chairman. Mr. Van. Mr. Tucker, I'm glad you're right. I mean, we're going to beat Mr. Hall over there because I'm proud of these citizens buying these properties up and make, make the Muskogee look better. And plus, it pucks money back on the tax rolls for the county. And uh, I'm just... Keep on, keep up the good work, Mr. Miller. Bring them all in. Well, thank you. We did have a couple of citizens come in today to pick up their deeds, and they were happy. It was good to see. You know, people coming into City Hall and being excited about what's going on in Muskogee. So, uh, yeah, it's a good program. Like I say, it definitely brightens up our city and makes it look pretty. And, mm -hmm. you know, take, make, you know, they'll put a house on or something and make, have pride, and, and I hope they take care of it. And like I say, I'm glad to see these houses. And, I mean, these pieces of property go. Okay. I'll turn the floor back over to you, Mr. Chairman. You bet. Any other discussion or comments? Roll call. Deputy Mayor James Scully? Yes. Jenny Boydston? Yes. Marlon Coleman? Yes. Wayne Johnson? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Derek Reed? <coughs> Dan Hall? Yes. Mayor Coburn? Yes. The motion carries. Item number three. 
Consider approval of a city council resolution of the city of Muskogee establishing and adopting a downtown sidewalk repair program to address safety issues on sidewalks <coughs> within downtown Muskogee or take any necessary action. Mr. Garvin. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, we are requesting approval of a resolution establishing and adopting a downtown sidewalk repair program. Uh, before I go through the program, I'm going to try to give you a little bit of background. Uh, several months ago, there was a sidewalk committee developed. That sidewalk committee was tasked with reviewing city ordinances, basically to see who was responsible for the maintenance of the sidewalk as well as mowing of the right of way. That committee reviewed the ordinances and confirmed that uh, the ordinances stated that it was the abutting property owner's responsibility. That committee then wanted to find out what other cities were doing. So we contacted OML. I think your mic went off and then I came back on again. Oh, okay. Oh. They contacted 126 municipalities and the survey basically showed the majority of the municip municipalities surveyed that the abutting property owner was responsible. Now there was some exceptions. For example, abandoned property, which we do underneath our weed abatement program. Uh, drainage areas, which Public Works does a lot of drainage areas. And then the third exception was downtown. So a lot of cities uh, took care of the, the maintenance on the downtown. With that in mind, the committee reviewing that and having the results from the survey, uh, they felt like uh, we needed to look at downtown and address some of the issues with the downtown. Uh, so the first step to that was first determining uh, down to what's classified as downtown. And we looked at AIM. Since AIM is already defined downtown, that committee decided they would adopt the AIM downtown map. That way we're not looking at two different defined areas of downtown. The next step was an assessment. Uh, we wanted to find out uh, what issues we were facing. Uh, so the Public Works Department, along with uh, Greg Armstrong with Hallway Up Dyke and Bellum and a uh, DMI member, volunteered to do the assessment. And they just did a sample area. Uh, Basically, they identified some short-term safety issues that needed to be addressed. As far as the long-term, uh, if, if you'll remember correctly, just a few weeks ago, we entered into a contract with the University of Oklahoma to do a downtown master plan. I think the committee wants to wait until that master plan is complete before they address the long-term issues, which is <coughs> a replacement of sidewalk and utilities within downtown. I met with OU actually today and was going over some uh, different items that they were requesting, and I asked them about what they would do as far as the sidewalks in downtown, the plan itself. And he said they would look at uh, all pedestrian traveled areas. They would look at what width does the sidewalk need to be, uh, what type of material for long-term use of the sidewalk. Uh, and they will put a plan together. So once the downtown master plan is complete, we'll have a much better picture of what needs to be done downtown on long-term issues like replacement of sidewalk and utilities. Now, going back to the other, uh, since the ordinance states that the abutting property owner is responsible for repairing the sidewalk, we needed to have a resolution on here to adopt a downtown sidewalk program. And by the way, the sidewalk committee has reviewed the resolution and the program itself, which I'm fixing to go over, and has recommended uh, approval of both. Uh, as far as the program, the purpose. The purpose is to address the safety issues <coughs> with existing sidewalks within downtown Muskogee. The scope of work. It will consist of repairing existing public sidewalks that are located within the right of way to a reasonably safe condition. And this is all subject to city resources, being funding and manpower. There will, this does not include any replacement or new sidewalks. This is only repair of safety issues. Uh, guidelines, they wanted to set some guidelines to be consistent on determining which sidewalks need to be repaired. So these are the guidelines that was established. Uh, first, sidewalk having a crack or joint with a deviation or difference in elevation of three-fourths inch or more. Here's just some examples. Next item, sidewalks having a crack or joint with an opening width of three-fourths inch or more. 
And here's some examples of those. Next one is sidewalks that is tilted or settled more than three inches measured four feet from the lowest or highest point. And you can kind of see the high point there where he's, getting, where he's got his hand, uh, where he's measured is only about 18 inches out, but that looks to be about two and a half inches, which will definitely be above the four inches with the, or the three inches within four foot. There's just another <coughs> example. And there's another example. Uh, next is sidewalk that's uh, pitting or scaling over 50% of the surface. Here's some, some of the bricks. There's a good one of the, the scaling. To continue on, the next item was sidewalks that trap water or does not provide adequate surface drain. Here's just an example. You can see where all the uh, area looks dirty, where water pond and the dirt settled, so you can tell that the water, water has been standing at that location. Here's another one. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell, but there's kind of a high point in the middle of the sidewalk, and you can see where the sidewalks <coughs> drop down or settled against the building, which will allow water to trap and pond. So those are the, some of the issues we're looking at. Next is the tree wells uh, that no longer contain a tree. Here's an example of one without a grate, uh, got a large dead stump in it. Here's an example of one with a grate that still has a, a stump of a dead tree. Next is uh, drains that are broken or missing. Here's just an example of a drain. I believe this drain's located between the sidewalk and a planter. And as you can see, the drain's tilted up, got all kinds of issues with it. Here's just another actual drain on a curb that, that's got some damage. Uh, we also cited that any deficiency that the public works director or his designee has determined to be hazardous. Uh, but those are the main categories that we'll be looking at on determining uh, which sidewalks to address the safety issues. Uh, sidewalk repair, we're stating that uh, underneath this program, repair will be with concrete or an epoxy-based uh, patchy material. Now that can include some coloring to the concrete to try to match the color of the tile that's out there. It could also include stamping some of the concrete or texturing, uh, but there will be no decorative bricks or tiles used. We're, we're not trying to make it look, be, Visibility-wise, be great. We want to address safety issues under this program. That's our concern. The short-term needs, <coughs> which is safety issues. As far as the repair schedule, uh, the Public Works Department uh, will recommend a schedule and prior prioritize the work, uh, but they'll recommend it to the Sidewalk Committee. Then the Sidewalk Committee will review it and determine if the work needs to take place. That recommendation will be based on the severity of the safety hazards on the volume of pedestrian traffic, the visibility of the condition, <coughs> length of time the condition has existed, and of course it's all subject to available city resources, funding and manpower. Now, depending on the, the city resources, it may take some time to make some of these repairs. We wanna make sure everyone understands that it is still the property owner's responsibility uh, for the sidewalk. So they may have to go ahead and make some, some repairs to mitigate some hazards within this area. Because again, it could be if we don't have this, the resources or the funding, it's still gonna be the property owner. So we just want them to be aware that, that they may have to still do some work to, to address some hazards. Uh, this will be effective on August the 22nd. Resolution is effective upon council approval and this is set for the council meeting on August the 22nd. Uh, now, budget-wise, we're only looking at uh, uh, 45000 However, this budget does include some lighting that we're going to be doing downtown also. Uh, we've got some prices on lighting. We think there <coughs> probably be around 30000 maybe a little more, to address some of the, the hazards with the sidewalks. Uh, be glad to answer any questions. Uh, Mike was on the committee, is here to answer any questions. <coughs> Wayne Johnson also serves on the committee and can probably answer some questions also. 
Well, before we start asking Mr. Garvin any questions, Leanne Langston has signed up to speak to this issue. So, Leanne, if you don't mind, and I think you know how from your experience, name and address, and <coughs> I, I wrote that down on the front here, so I Thank remember. You. Leanne Langston, 1628 North Country Club Road. I'd like to address a statement I read this morning about downtown business owners that are wealthy and can afford and should afford to fix sidewalks in front of their buildings. There are some things I know as executive director of downtown Muskogee. I know that not all business owners, uh, business owners own the buildings. Many of them are from out of state. One does not have to be rich to own a building. Dangerous sidewalks not only don't encourage businesses, they drive business away due to safety issues. Building owners want our downtown sidewalks to improve to the point where they are able to maintain them. They're eager to do that. Already, they have gone out and done a lot of things to help our downtown. They purchased their own trash cans. Some of them now camouflage or cover dangerous situations. They've planted flowers and even vegetables to enhance the beauty of downtown. They've hauled off huge broken chunks of curbs in front of their businesses if they're light enough that they can carry. They're bringing merchandise and seating areas out onto their sidewalks, even with the <laughs> unevenness of it, uh, for their customers. They're hosting events that are bringing citizens and tourists to downtown. I can only imagine what a mess we'd have if every owner repaired or replaced his or her sidewalk. Can you imagine the expense it would take for individuals to remove what's currently here, do it safely without damaging or destroying the underlying uh, infrastructure, water lines, gas lines, electricity, et cetera, all of which is underneath? and have access to specialized equipment necessary to both remove and replace sidewalks as well as the skilled labor that would be involved. As for comparing downtown sidewalks to residential ones, repairing those in downtown affects our entire community <coughs> and is essential to the tax base. Repaired residential sidewalks, though needed, do not affect the entire town nor contribute to our taxes. It's okay to speak for both. Many of us have spoken about repairing downtown sidewalks for many years. Downtown businesses have un unneedingly struggled for years with little assistance. We never threw stones at other projects that were achieved while we were waiting. That helps no one, and I pray council votes unanimously to approve this vital first step. A thriving downtown brings tax dollars to our city, and an active, vibrant downtown builds a renewed sense of community. When we achieve that sense of community, we won't protest progress just because everything cannot be accomplished at the same time. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Langston. Now, questions for Mr. Garvin? Mr. Chairman and uh, Councilor Johnson, I'm going to borrow one of your phrases. I'm sure you won't mind. Uh, I think that this uh, goes a long way towards making certain that we're not viewed as a city, uh, as Councilor Johnson says, that rolls up the sidewalks uh, at 5 o'clock in the evening. If you visit many of the cities who have thriving downtowns, uh, they're thriving in many regards because the city, along with the local Main Street projects or similar organizations to our DMI, were very aggressive to work together in partnership to be certain that if businesses were going to try to relocate to the downtown area, that the city uh, was going to be a good visible partner to be certain that they had done everything that was needed uh, so that those businesses could feel like they could open. I'm certain that in the city of Muskogee, uh, when it comes to the 5 or 6 o'clock hour, according to a lot of studies that are out now, people who spend money spend money after 6 o'clock, uh, 5 o'clock even. Uh, and money, many, many of those dollars go towards recreation uh, that can be provided by other cities downtown outside of Muskogee, Oklahoma. And so I think this is going to go a long way to be certain that we could not only recover those costs, but to be certain that our residents have something to do here and not spend money other places. I will ask um, if it will not uh, bother or disturb the Streets Committee or the existing committee that we're sitting on now for clarity purposes that when we do make our motion to move forward, uh, that we do so uh, in a way that 
also ask that we direct staff to uh, create a comprehensive uh, sidewalk plan for residential neighborhoods and that they'll come back with that plan for us in 90 days. And that way, uh, we're killing two birds at one stone. We're doing what needs to be done for downtown, but also we're looking with a longer eyes range in terms of what we can do for residential sidewalks as well. And, and we have had some discussion on that. We just felt like the downtown uh, at this point was a priority and we want to address it first. We've had discussions, for example, uh, putting together or making this known, because some of this we currently do, uh, that in a, a residential area, uh, the city of Muskogee will come in and remove that sidewalk and we'll haul that debris off, which is a major cost of getting the sidewalk removed and getting the debris off. We're talking about getting bids from contractors so we can find out how much it will cost to replace it. Then we can give that to the citizens and say, here's three contractors or, or here's the low bid, here's what it's gonna cost you to do that. So we're working on plans to assist the residential areas. And, and I'm a continuation and I'm, of the committee. And I'm agreeing. I'm just saying I think that uh, it would satisfy a lot of residential concerns uh, just in the form of a motion that as we approve this as been presented that we also direct staff to come back with a plan for residential neighborhoods within 90 days. Okay. So Matt, can we do that in, the, in a motion since residentials wasn't part of the agenda item to direct staff for residentials? It can just be provided as direction to staff. Okay, and that's what I'm asking. But that doesn't have to be in the motion. I'll calendar it so it gets done. Thank you. Okay. I just <laughs> want to make sure. Fine. I need a clarification okay. for something. <clears throat> it's just for me being not probably hearing it the way you were saying it or something. It just to educate me. Uh, $45,000, but we're still having the downtown people repair their their sidewalks, right? Or are we going to use this forty-five thousand to repair the sidewalks? We're going to. Use, we got forty-five thousand uh, currently budgeted. Mm -hmm. uh, of that forty-five thousand, there's some street lighting that we're going to have to do downtown, and it's probably going to be ten to fifteen thousand. So we're going to have Public Works will have about thirty thousand left to go through and pour concrete in the tree wells, address the, the elevation difference on the sidewalks, uh, correct some drainage issues and they'll just have to determine what they can do with the funding they have available, and they'll have to prioritize it. So which, we have the committee assistance. Yeah, that's, and the committee <clears> will <throat> make that recommendation. The public works will recommend which ones to the committee, and then the committee will, will approve it. This is just to kind of make it, to make it look where it's functional, but it's, it may not be aesthetically pleasing to the eye. Safe. Our goal is to address safety issues, make it mm -hmm. safe for people to walk downtown. Okay, because at first I'm th sitting here thinking in my head, wow, this is going to be really neat. We're going to have smooth sidewalks. They're all going to be uniform. Then I go, hold it. $45,000 isn't going to cut your sidewalks. <laughs> so It will address some safety issues, uh, <clears throat> and it's a start. Well, the other thing that I think this will step us forward with, you know, we've been talking about sidewalk. I've been talking about sidewalks for downtown for a long time, and one of the reasons is, uh, you know, we – Muskogee Public Schools has the bed, best center at 202 West Broadway, and we've had a number of accidents that's there uh, because of uneven sidewalks. And, and one of it is how do you do, address it because of the brick. Uh, and, that, and that's what the you know sidewalk committee spent a lot of time on. Um, and, and one of the things that this will even help a, a business owner is defining what repair can take place. So maybe we didn't advance far enough with the funding that's there, uh, but the with public works um, defining what type of repair is going to take place in those street wells or what ty type of repair is going to take place uh, maybe uh, you know later on if we don't you know we're not going to get very far with them um, but property owners may go you know if, if that's an acceptable repair I can go ahead with and get in touch with public works and go yes I can do that type of repair because right now it's it's really not defined what you can do in front of your property because you can't get matching brick and that's what I've been trying to say you know in front of in front of our building how do you repair that type of deal because you can't get those three-quarter quarter brick you know how do you repair it well now we can define a process so this really is a step in the right direction so I think it's a it's a been a long time coming but it's a good move okay
Councilor Johnson and Councilor Hall, that I guess that brings into a follow-up question since it sounds like we're all saying the same thing on cost. Um, it doesn't sound like $45,000 is enough, so I was wondering if the city manager, if you're not aware tonight, I understand, um, you know, what would it really cost if it's going to be ten to 15000 for lights? Does the, does the request tonight need to be 60000 or so? And if that's the case, do we have that available? No, we only budgeted 45000 We only budgeted 45000 mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay. As you can tell, we all want our city sidewalks, downtown sidewalks, to look really nice. It's just, I mean, I just wish we had more money to push into it right now. Because Councilman Johnson has been working hard and he's uh, really adamant about it. He's almost as excited about that as Ivory gets about his park. So <laughs> I'd like to move for approval. I want to thank uh, the sidewalk committee for assisting public works in this matter because it does help us define what we're going to do and how we're going to do it and how we're going to go forward with it. So I'm very appreciative. I, I see some relief uh, in my future. So I think it's a step in the right direction. Second. Mr. Uh, Chairman, may I be recognized? Sure. <laughs> On this sidewalk issue, months ago, I brought a PowerPoint up here, presented to how downtown Muskogee looked and how the residential area looked. They both need repairing, we know that. But I still have a problem with this. We can form a committee for downtown, but still we leave our community out. And every citizen can hear me in my voice right now. What we need to do as a citizen is get own committees because these committees seem like they get ahead and do things quickly. Residents need to get a committee and do some things. And uh, I totally disagree with downtown uh, getting sidewalks my problem I have is that downtown, like Ms. Langston was saying, that, oh, yeah, that was me said that, Ms. Langston. You could just say my name. It, did, it wouldn't matter to me. Yes, I did say that. To me, the people that has the buildings downtown, just like the, my property, if I had a sidewalk in front of my house, I would be responsible for it. I would have to pay for it. Those building owners need to have to pay for it because you got, even I don't care if you're renting or what, those renters are making money off of whoever who's written those buildings downtown. And I'm pretty sure you wouldn't be in a business if you didn't have money. You're making money somehow. And if the city would do it like they do the residential areas, go in and uh, take the sidewalks completely out and then let the business owners replace the sidewalks. First of all, you got infrastructure you forgot up underneath those sidewalks. That infrastructure downtown is probably old as Methuselah. That needs to be replaced. But we, like I said, we're gonna, we don't want to put a Band-Aid on it and spend $45,000 to patch. And like I said, uh, that tax dollar, that's, that's everybody's tax dollars here in the city of Muskogee, not just downtown. That $45,000 we're talking about, that's tax dollars. Am I wrong, Mr. City Manager? You're correct. That's everybody's tax dollars. Those tax dollars goes to Ward 1, Ward 2, Ward 3, Ward 4. These councilmen up here ought to be Jumping for joy to get something in their neighborhood for sidewalks. I, when I come back Monday, I'm going to bring a power, my other PowerPoint that I brought the first time. And I seen your little PowerPoint over here on the screen. But I'm going to bring you something that sidewalks are sticking up where kids can bust their heads wide open in residential areas. You know, we need to be focused on residential areas also. So I don't feel that down just because downtown Muskogee, Mr. Johnson, he's over downtown Muskogee development and this and that, that, you know, that they should get these sidewalks. And, that's just how I feel about it. Because like I say, it's, it's, it's like that in the, and also in the neighborhoods. You want kids riding your bikes and walking down the street. How would you like an older person? Just like I asked the lady at OML about you know, the situation if you, in the neighborhood and you're walking down and an older lady, she falls and trips over a trip and has the sidewalk sticking up that high, that high. I didn't see no sidewalk sticking up that high in downtown Muskogee. But when I come Monday, I'll bring those pictures back and remind y'all in case y'all don't got amnesia up here. Uh, so, like I said, I disagree with giving this money to downtown Muskogee for these sidewalks. If you go put Muskogee, put everybody in the picture. Don't just put downtown Muskogee in the picture because the people in downtown Muskogee, I know the banks got it. I know the uh, Board of Education have probably, I know they have it. You just walk down through downtown Muskogee. Matter of fact, I had a talk with a gentleman before I came, and I told him the situation how I felt. And I still feel the people downtown Muskogee can afford to put sidewalks in. But some of these residential people, like my constituents, can't mm -hmm. afford the sidewalks. Okay. 
And that's just how I feel about it. So, Mr. Tucker, does my suggestion on directing staff to come back with a plan in 90 days address those concerns and others about residential yes. neighborhoods? Mr. Tucker, still I'll say it again. That $45,000 is our taxpayers' money for everybody, not only downtown Muskogee. That's for every citizen, every ward. So when you put money down in downtown Muskogee, you taking away from our residential area. And this, those, those are taxpaying citizens just like I am up here, like all of us is up here. So you'd explain to those citizens why you're taking from them and giving to downtown Muskogee when they got people in downtown Muskogee that can afford, I'll say it again, that can afford to put sidewalks in. You got all of his bank. Hey, they downtown. You can walk all down through town, downtown. You see number of businesses, striving businesses. Miss Langston has a business. I don't know if she owns the property or not, but I'm pretty sure that who she's renting from or she don't own it, hey, they can come up with the money to get the, for that sidewalk. You know, it don't cost a million dollars just to put a little, I mean, some concrete in, but I'm telling you, the infrastructure needs to be done first. That infrastructure needs to be done first. We can patch all we want. Let's don't patch the problem. Let's fix the problem. I'm tired of patching up here. That's all I can say. I'll turn the floor back over to you, but I'm totally against putting 45000 on those lights. Oh, let me ask you a question on those lights. Now, is that light, those lights, is that uh, downtown Muskogee's problem, responsibility? No, those we're putting in the lights. So the lights are our responsibility. Mm -hmm. I agree with the lights. I have no problem with the lights. And also, I check with the curves. I know the curves is the city's problem. I have no problem with that. But them sidewalks, oh, yeah, I got a problem with that. I'll turn the floor back over to you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. have a motion and a second. Any other comments or discussion? Roll call. Deputy Mayor James Scully. Yes. Janie Boydston. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Ivory Van. No. Derek Reed. Yes. Dan Hall. Definitely. Mayor Coburn. Yes. And the motion carries. Item number four. Is, Mr. Yes. Garvin, does item number four need to be stricken, or are you ready to address that issue? Uh, actually, uh, the Planning Commission did table this to their next Planning Commission meeting, which is September the 6th. The next Public Works meeting is also on September the 6th. Uh, so we just ask it to be tabled to the end, leaving fine. The tabled or stricken? Uh, you could actually go either way. It's not required to be published. Okay, so well, let's go ahead and just strike it, and that way we don't work. Have to be, in case something else happens home. with you guys. Item number five. Consider approval of the appointment of Gary Dunlap to the Urban Renewal Authority to serve a three-year term beginning on September 1, 2016 and ending on August 31, 2019, or take other necessary action. Ms. Moyston. Yes. Uh, I have nominated Gary Dunlap. He is a real estate agent here in Muskogee, and uh, I know that he has some urban renewal experience from the <coughs> previous urban renewal authority, and I've spoken with him, and I think he'll make a very good member for this committee. Move for approval. Second. On a motion and a second. Any discussion? Roll call. Deputy Mayor James Scully. Yes. Jenny Boydston. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Mayor Coburn. Yes. The motion carries. Item number six. Consider approval of appointment of Patrick Kale to the Planning Commission to serve a three-year term beginning September 1, 2016 and ending August 31st, 2019. This is a city council appointee and uh, Mr. Kale had expressed that he had an interest and the time to serve on this committee, so I move for approval. Second. A motion is second. Any discussion? Yes, Mr. Gulley. Uh, yes. I noticed you appointed Mr. Kale last week uh, for the foundation board. Is that, that was a council appointee too also, yes, right? Yes, sir. And then you appointed him again to this, correct? Yes, sir. That's two. Yes, sir. It sure is. Okay. I'm just, I mean, I'm just trying to get some balance. Okay. Because Mr. Kale is a new councilman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and like I say, uh, myself, I've only been appointed one time to one board, and that's facilities board. And thank, thank, thanks to Mr. Hall over there, I, I have a board position. Good. You know, but I was just curious why I come. Mr. Kell gets appointed twice, and he's he hasn't been on the council very long because um, he's a businessman. I had some issues. I, I would still be on the board, Ivory, mm -hmm. and I had to come off the board because of some timing issues with the, with my job, and. I kind of alluded to putting Mr. Kell in my place, it, and I talked to Mr. Golly about that. 
since I I would still be on there, I kind of alluded to Mr. Golly that I would like for Patrick to replace me on the that on this board because I wasn't going to fulfill my time on there. So it was kind of mine and his conversation, and I re kind of requested that's who replaced me. Okay, I was you know I was just wondering you know you get appointed one one week to one board and you get get appointed another week to another board and you ain't been up here on this council very long, and uh, the people up here you bypass. Uh, a lot of time, you know, so I, I was just curious. Okay. Any other discussion? That's it, Mr. Gully. I'll turn the floor back over to you. Thank you, sir. Move yeah. for approval. Oh, we already got it. We've already got it. Okay. I have a motion and a second. Roll call. Deputy Mayor James Gully. Yes. Janie Boydston. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Mayor Coburn. Yes. And the motion carries. Item number seven. Consider approval of the appointment of Toby Ledbetter to the Muskogee <coughs> City County Trust Port Authority, subject to the confirmation of the county commissioners and to the Muskogee City County Port Authority, both to serve a four-year term, beginning on September 1, 2016, and ending on August 31st, 2020, or take other necessary action. Mr. Van. Yes, this is my appointment to the uh, Muskogee City County Trust Port Authority. And I, on this appointee, I went to quite a few people that I trust and I admire <laughs> advice. And I really had to get some advice from them. Because like I say, on this board here, it's never been, it's no minorities. I'm talking people of color like I am. And not only, nothing that's a lot better, uh, is a person of color, but she has integrity. She's been, uh, she served on boards here in Muskogee. Matter of fact, I looked at one of the papers, Mr. Mayor, you put her on the Muskogee Trans Transit Board. And Ms. Ledbetter, she, she has a business here in Muskogee and uh, in the Shadowwood Mall. And like I say, she's very active in our community. And I think she'll definitely, definitely be a good fit for Mr. Robertson's uh, board out there at the port. And this is my appointee. And also she had a lot, of, lot to do with the Renaissance Fair that's got started out there. And that, you know how successful that is. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I say, it took me a lot of thought, and I had a lot of people on my, my mind. But I think, Mr. Le I, you, you got the application in your packet, mm -hmm. and I think I'll say I think she's a be a good fit for this board, and hopefully we can get some more minorities on this board. So, so I, oh, I'm sorry. I have I have one person, Miss Rutlinger, want to speak to this one. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I just didn't. Don't if you're if you got some more to say, I mean, I'm good. But I just but, I don't want to forget her. Oh, okay. <laughs> like I say, I think Miss Miss Ledbetter will be a good fit for this board, and I'm I'm, I'm proud. Of the people that I got with to guide me in this, because I wanted, I definitely, definitely wanted this to be a good fit. Okay. Ms. <laughs> Rutland, if you'd like to address us, we need your name and address, and you'll have five minutes to address this issue. Teresa Rutlinger, 2500 Shelby Court. Um, I've known Tommy Ledbetter for about uh, 17 years when we first moved here. Uh, she happened to be, and I don't know what the official uh, name if it was, but she was the children educator program coordinator director for our church. And that's how I first met her. And I think that she is uh, a very pleasant individual. She presents herself very well. She's a very eloquent speaker. She's very well educated. She's self-motivated. She's well-rounded. She's uh, very well-versed in many matters. She knows our town, both the good and the bad. She thinks outside the box. She's a hard worker. She's not afraid to put in time and effort into an event or project for it to become successful. She's vested in our community. And as Mr. Van said, is currently a uh, business owner. Uh, I've often talked to those in the city and the community about Toby. And I definitely, how she would definitely be an asset in any position in City Hall or any high position in the community. I think she's a talent that we have not fully taken advantage of. And I think she'd be a very good representative for Muskogee. Thank you, Ms. Redlinger. Move for approval. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion or comments? Roll call. Deputy Mayor James Scully. Yes. Janie Boydston. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Mayor Coburn. Yes. And the motion carries. Seeing that no citizens signed up to address this committee, we are adjourned.
We'll now move to our special call meeting in Muskogee City Council. Roll call, please. Mayor Bob Coburn. Here. Deputy Mayor James Scully. Here. Dan Hall. Here. Marlon Coleman. Here. Janie Boydston. Here. Wayne Johnson. Here. Patrick Kale. Ivory Van. Here. Derek Reed. Here. Uh, item number one, please. Consider approval of the appointment of Keith Harlan to the Wellness <coughs> Initiative Committee to serve as a four-year term beginning August 1, 2016 and ending on July 31, 2020, or take other necessary action. Councilman Coleman. I have known Keith Harlan for several years now here in the city of Muskogee. He is the Director of Crisis Services for Green Country Behavioral Health. He is a adamant supporter of our community. He works well with everyone he's encountered and is a very stalwart upon, uh, supporter for those things that make Muskogee great, and I recommend approval. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yeah, may I be recognized, Mr. Mayor? Pardon me? May I be recognized? Uh-huh. You can. Mr. Uh, Rem uh, Councilman Coleman, you've done a great job. That's a, that's a good appointment. I've known Mr. Harlan ever since I was a kid. We grew up together in Mount Zion Baptist Church. We used to sing in the choir together. And also, like I said, he's a very smart uh, gentleman, and I'm, I'm just glad to see him that he's on one of these boards. Thank you. I'll turn the floor back over to you, Mr. Mayor. We've got a motion in a second. Other comments? Roll call. Deputy Mayor James Scully. Yes. Janie Boydston. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Mayor Coburn. Yes. Motion carries. Item number two. Discuss and take action to appoint a member to the Purchasing Committee succeeding Dan Hall. Uh, Councilman Gully. Uh, we talked discuss this issue we didn't have much time because we had a long agenda earlier so quite frankly we're not quite ready to make any recommendations for the purchase of committee so it's a hard man to replace him yes he is <laughs> <laughs> we'll move to item number three consider an executive session to discuss and take possible action on the following a Pursuant to Section 307C10, Title 25, Oklahoma Statutes, consider convening an executive session for the purpose of conferring on matters pertaining to economic development within the urban renewal area within the Northwest Corridor of the City of Muskogee and take any necessary action in open session. B, pursuant to Section 307B2, Title 25, Oklahoma Statutes, consider convening an executive session to discuss negotiations with the internal I'm sorry, with the International Association of Firefighters, local number 57, and if necessary, take appropriate action in open session. We'll now entertain a motion for executive session. So moved. We have a motion. Second. And a second. Any discussion? Roll call. Deputy Mayor James Scully. Yes. Janie Boydston. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Dan yes. Hall. Yes. Mayor Coburn. Motion carries. Yes, motion carries, <laughs> and we will now consider ourselves in executive session. We will now reconvene from executive session. Roll call, please. Mayor Bob Coburn. Here. Deputy Mayor James Scully. Here. Dan Hall. Here. Marlon Coleman. Here. Janie Boydston. Here. Wayne Johnson. Here. Patrick Kale. Ivory Van. Here. Derek Reed. Here. Uh, Mr. B.C., uh, Thank you. 3A and B. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. 3A, pursuant to Section 307C10, Title 25, Oklahoma Statutes, Council did convene an executive session to discuss the purpose, or for the purpose of conferring on matters pertaining to economic development within the urban renewal area within the northwest corridor of the city of Muskogee. And after being fully briefed and discussing the issue, I believe a motion would be appropriate authorizing the city manager to negotiate a development agreement and a related sales agreement uh, within the parameters discussed in executive session, subject to final council review and approval. We would entertain that motion. So moved. A so motion yeah. and a second. Any discussion or comment? Roll call. Deputy Mayor James Gully. Yes. Janie Boydston. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Mayor Coburn. Yes. Motion carries. Item 3B. Pursuant to Section 307B2, Title 25, Oklahoma Statutes, Council did convene an executive session to discuss negotiations with the International Association of Firefighters, Local Number 57. And after being fully briefed on the matter, I believe no action is necessary. And that con con concludes our agenda. And thank you for joining us today's meeting.